Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, here we are at this is a well, what is it? The seventh or the eighth uh, meeting we have of talking music and uh, it's a fantastic time to share some music with the students and uh, for the students to interact with us and with the, the guests that come every other week. We have, uh, I'm admitting more people. I know today there are also, uh, there is a certain participation from the US. That's very nice to see. Uh, wait a minute, we have more. Jeff, hi Jeff. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Anyway, um, so uh, what is, first of all, talking music? For those who haven't never joined us so far, it's not a radio program, so just don't, don't expect anything like that. I don't have a production studio or anything like that. It's just a gathering we have with, with our students. I coordinated a program called Music and Acoustic Engineering at the Politecnico di Milan. It's a master's program. And our students are, like me and like many of my colleagues, absolutely in love with music. So it's fantastic to have the, the opportunity to listen to music together, to talk about it. And uh, we go by subject and we go by people that come and visit us during these meetings. Uh, I can see uh, already Yo Yogev is already connected and he is the star of the day. So every other week we have a, a guest and this time I'm very, very pleased to have Yogev with us. We are, my students are, are uh, already familiar with Yogev because he, he came last year to give a fantastic seminar, a three hour seminar that really left everybody speechless. And uh, so welcome Yogev and Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for, uh, for having me here. Well, it's really fantastic to see you again. Um, Yoga came to visit us last year, and uh, um, it was uh, a three day that we spent together talking about music, going around in Milan. That was before, obviously, the lockdown. Yeah. We, it was really fantastic to get to know you. We met, as a matter of fact, in New York just a, a few, a couple of months earlier than uh, when you came to give the seminar. And we spent an afternoon together just talking, talking. And it's really impossible not to talk when you're around, uh, especially when well, not to talk about music. It's like with Simone, who just joined us, Simone Bolini, who was our guest uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, when we meet, we start talking, it never ends. The last time we talked for about seven hours, we didn't even realize that we were doing that, right, Simone? <laughs> Indeed. Right. Anyway, uh, um, so, uh, I have, uh, today is a special day for me, so I do have some sort of an opening credit thing, so I will start with that, if that's okay with you. I think you've already seen that, but I kind of have fun with this. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> Okay, this was happened actually. <laughs> if you remember when we had <laughs> our concert, I so much with this. This is amazing. <laughs> so, with the, this was done because uh, we were preparing for the the gathering with the students. We had Polyphonia and all the students from the Polytechnic participate into this sort of a virtual concert that we did in uh, we did in total lockdown. Uh, we had you as a guest. We had Simone as well. We had uh, four and six and several other guests that came uh, that gave us content from all over the world and 
most of all, we had our own students that participated with a truckload of material. So I thought that uh, since I was working on the on the video credits for that concert, I thought I should do something for Yogev as well. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> today was the day to use it, and there's no doubt about it. <laughs> so Yogev, it's it's great to have you with us, and uh, I. Um, uh, what I wanted to do today is to kind of visit a little, uh, a few things, and I don't know if I can do it in a uh, chronological fashion because I probably right. don't have things in the right order. Maybe I can give you my own chronological order, meaning how did I get to know you and why were you involved with music and acoustic engineering? The whole thing happening uh, uh, happened because actually I was working on my course on computer music representations and models where we try to explain uh, how to model music and in particular rhythmic structures, uh, harmonic structures, melodic uh, structures, and uh, you know uh, all the aspects of music in order to be able to develop decent hard uh, software for uh, making music in general. If you don't know anything about music, it's hard to produce mu uh, software for music. So that that's the purpose of that course. And I remember struggling a great deal trying to figure out interesting models on how to make music when it comes to rhythmic structures. And uh, I remember I, I worked on a polymetric, uh, polymetric structure polyrhythms uh, and all kinds of uh, ideas on how to use mathematical formulas to reduce multiple signatures all kind of crazy stuff then you came in and, and kind of ruined the whole thing because you gave uh -huh. a completely different perspective on things so uh, yes uh, <laughs> you can be proud of that uh, and it just made me look very bad oh boy that wasn't the, the... <laughs> no no i'm kidding of course <laughs> anyway uh, the reason why i contacted you i wanted to share this with the students before we talk about you uh, was because uh, i kind of saw you in action uh, with uh, something that i found particularly interesting and it happened uh, later that you actually gave a contribution on that but it kind of shows the way you think there was this challenge by Alfredo Rodriguez that uh, you remember Alfredo he's a, 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 a Cuban composer a jazz pianist a phenomenal uh, musician as well and he came up with these little challenges and I uh, remember that then uh, that, that this happened also for the concert in uh, in uh, the coronavirus concert that we did so I still am in the wrong slide so this is what he was proposing it was since the the episode of today is called rhythmic challenges and you are the perfect person to have for this sort of things um, uh, this was a rhythmic challenge in so many ways oh, because yeah. <laughs> he, he, I yeah. mean Alfredo came up with this sequence maybe you can say something about it it's a uh, so he started doing this as a part of you know when we're all we're all we're stuck at home. It was around I think maybe April or March. Yeah, this yeah, year, yeah. Where obviously we're all home because of COVID, and he would throw these like one minute snippets of him playing. He's an he's an amazing player. No I mean, doubt. He doesn't even need backing players, but he just he <laughs> just threw some some of these short one minute kind of like songs that he had and he just kind of challenged people to build something add, on it. yeah add whatever they want i think most uh submissions were just you know a single player playing something either accompanying it or playing it in unison or something like that mm -hmm. um obviously me and my friends take everything too far <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, this is so uh I mean, so, we just we just thought, okay, let's just add a bunch of us over it and have like a whole composition over, not composition, but kind of like make this make the backing track for this. So, so let me play first the one minute thing that was the original challenge. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so this is a true rhythmic challenge. I mean, uh, um, my son Kevin and I have been, uh, I mean, sweat over just to figure out the sweet, the rhythmic structure of this. So uh, it's a series of uh, of uh, rhythmic changes, uh, melo uh, rhythmic modulation, one after the other, seven, seven, eight, seven, seven, five, and so on. It's a, it's a really complicated to build, and he played it like a metronome, metronome on this flimsy keyboard. So what yeah. the heck could you do with something? like this here it is let me just play it for you because it's really fun oh, sorry <laughs> Amazing, absolutely amazing yoga. So that's it. I thought this had to be a moment to, to start the this uh, conversation with you because it shows uh, your view of rhythmic structures, how you can actually make sense of that. And I can guarantee everybody that this is a lot of work because just figuring yeah. out and writing down all the the rhythmic changes of this piece is uh, it takes hours just to do that. So that's a phenomenal, amazing, amazing job. And so, can you tell me something about the people that were with you in this video? Uh, so yeah, the the guitar player, his name is Daniel Weiss. He is um, I've been playing with him for a while. He actually just released I think last week. He just released uh, the first single from his album that I'm on, which I can send to you. If, uh, if you if we'd like, he's an amazing Please. guitar player. Please. Oh yes, yes, the song Max. Uh, he's a guitar player. The bass player is a guy called um, Guy Bernfeld. He went to Berkeley with me. I, actually, I mean, I know him from Israel before. He is also one of I mean, one of my favorite bass players out there. And we we went through a lot of different. He actually played with me with Tigran in in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when uh, when we did that, he plays with me in the Indian Ensemble in Berkeley. Uh, we had a few bands outside of school. We've been playing together for for a long time. It's one of the most amazing bass players I've seen in a long, long time. It's yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh, not a usual one. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and uh, and the last one is, is Sharon, who you know, who is yeah. uh, my girlfriend. We did all the conical parts uh, together. Um, I mean, we just like doing conical, so we thought about putting it here and she actually agreed to join me in the video so <laughs> is she with you in uh in israel now she's coming next week She's coming next week. Oh, well, I, just, I, should, I have to say a few things about Sharon. She's a fantastic bass player, and she has a beautiful voice, and she writes music that is absolutely gorgeous. So I think, I, I'm sorry I don't have a piece today to put on, but I promise I'll put it on in one of the next episodes of, of Talking Music. Uh, I, I agree with everything. She's really worth said. listening. She is absolutely phenomenal. I am so. very biased, but I agree with what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I am not biased, so <laughs> I can say this very, very candidly. Anyway, um, actually, going back a little more in time, uh, the moment in which I actually realized about your ability, and that's why I tried to write you, and you were nicely nice enough to answer right away, and this doesn't happen with, uh, with artists, international artists in general, was when I saw you in action exactly working up uh, you, your way up to explaining the rhythms, the crazy rhythms of Tigran Amasya. And in fact, there was a, a moment in which you were showing how to uh, basically make sense of the, of the beatboxing that Tigran Amasyan does when he plays piano. So I have a little video that shows this. So I want to show it and share it with everyone else. Uh... Oh, this was so hard.
<laughs> oh, sorry, I interrupted it, uh, but I do have a. Uh... <laughs> It was an amazing thing you did. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal thing you did. I see Martin Verno just join us. It's good to see you, Mark. And he's uh, applauding the performance that you just did. <laughs> this, this one was particularly, particularly difficult. I can see that. And But you also tr transcribed the whole freaking thing. I did, but this was one of the first... I mean, maybe... just that drives me crazy. How the heck did you do that? So... Uh, we, we were in that show in Berkeley, and this was after I did already transcribed his other beatbox thing. So once this thing happened, a friend of mine who was looking, who was sitting next to me, was looking at me. It kind of like, oh, this, this is the next one. And it's just like, duh! Of course I'm gonna, <laughs> of course I'm gonna try and, and figure this out. So I take the recording, and this one was one of the first times that I just. Usually I understand basically what's going on and I need to just figure out the details. This time I just I just couldn't understand one of those shifts. I didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't figure it out. And I think it took me two weeks of just trying to figure out, even before transcribing, just trying to figure out that rhythmic shift that was going on. I couldn't I couldn't make sense of it in any way. I was it was really I was actually kind of depressed. My roommate was like actually worried <laughs> about, like, about me. <laughs> but um, I just I just couldn't find. I couldn't make sense of it. I started transcribing it, knowing that I'm wrong, knowing that I don't. I didn't know what I. I couldn't. I still couldn't make sense of the of one of the shifts. Just hoping that in the process of working on it, I'll figure it out, and then eventually I, I did. But this one took, I think, the most time out of everything that I did. Well, Yoga, I remember when you came to give your to give your seminar, one thing that you were discussing is something that really threw me. I mean, I fell off the chair when when you talked about it because my my world, as far as rhythms are concern, concerned, is made of polymetric structure, is made of poly polyrhythmic structures so or systemic polyrhythm. You take the measure, divide it into different ways, and so on. And you just added one more layer. And I think that I could have never, with whatever I was telling my students, 
uh, I could have never explained what uh, Tigrano Masian does if you hadn't really explained me the, the idea of linear rhythms, where you actually take uh, thinking sort of a multi-resolution fashion. So you think in blobs, and these blobs are different duration, and then you subdivide each one of those blobs into different uh, lengths and th think different numbers of beats. Yeah. And by doing that, you basically uh, allow those people that cannot get the, all the details of this uh, of this uh, rhythm, uh, you allow them to anyway get something out of the performance because they get the blobs, but they don't get the fine details below. And it was really illuminated the way you explained it. Uh, and by the way, I, um, I should probably announce the fact that uh, Yogev is going to give another seminar on the 9th on the 9th of December, so make sure you tune in. Uh, we will advertise the seminar, and uh, if Yogev is okay with uh, opening the doors to the entire world, we'll open it, obviously. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the full explanation of what I'm just talking about right now, the idea of these multi-layered rhythms, and uh, which allow also the listener to kick in at the level that where the layer is more comfortable somehow. I, I, this subject is a subject that I, I love for many reasons, but I think the main one is that it's very simple to explain. It's very, it's, it, it, makes, it makes so much sense within itself that the result may sound complicated, but it's a very, very simple structure to explain that is, it's only hard because it kind of contradicts and conflicts with Western notation. That's the only place where it's, it gets difficult. So it's, in a way, if you don't know Western notation, this might be easier to get. Yeah, you know, in, it's in a true. Way. It, there is nothing worse than trying to put in antiples in the, in the, in the notation. Exactly. The you, polyrhythms you don't work. The only thing you can use are special poly signature notations, uh, like uh, exactly. Bernie, the, uh, the... Fernie Hu, for example. Mm -hmm. the, the, like the current Western system can't really explain this without going very, very much out of the way with tempo changes and stuff that is just makes it difficult, which is it's not. But yeah, th this this concept is is yeah is incredible. Well, we we will explore this when when you when you do your seminar. It's going to be on Wednesday, the 9th of December. And I will, we will be announcing on the on the Facebook page of uh, Music and Acoustic Engineering when exactly this will take place. We'll send you the link so every, anybody can join us and enjoy the the didactic performance of Yoga. And uh, I, I, he's uh, the, phenomenal at that, so I can guarantee you that. Um, Speaking of uh, this idea of influences, because um, you, you uh, seem to have been kind of liberated by the limits of notation. And uh, in, in many ways, I think it comes a little bit from Indian music and a little bit from Middle Eastern music. And uh, there is, a, I'm, I'm not sure whether this coincides, what I'm going to show, whether it coincides with the moment in which you met with the Tigran Amasyan, uh, or whether this happened earlier uh, in, in your career. But it's a fantastic uh, performance. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen, and so I really want to share it with all of you. It's, uh, I believe it came uh, during a period of residence of uh, Tigran Amasyan uh, at the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You graduated yep. from the Berkeley College of Music, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how, how long did uh, Tigran spend uh, as a resident there? I think something like five days, maybe. And I, are you kidding me? In five days, I, I saw a truckload of stuff that came out. Ah, because we, we, we practiced, obviously, we practiced way before uh, okay. we came in. Of course. <laughs> I <laughs> thought he had been there for a few months, at no, the very we, least. We, we were there forever. <laughs> okay, stuff. that explains. But he, and he had, um, because his set was very intense, he had a half an hour of a fusion set with us. Uh huh. And then he had a half an hour of a solo set. And then he had a half an hour of an orchestral set. Oh my God! So he had to do a lot of work, oh and he God. had this this video that you're gonna show, which is a, <laughs> it's he, uh, he, mind boggling. Uh, mind -boggling. He, had, he had a lot of work 
to do. He had a lot of like very short time to do it. We we had all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going to play the whole thing because it's absolutely mind-boggling. And there is a moment that I'm going to point out uh, that concerns you. It's such a unique plan. Indeed. Self-taught. Think so. Ah, that's a guy. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and you guys did the arrangement, right? Yeah, and Sharon. <laughs> oh wow. There is so much of progressive rock that kicks in here. Oh yeah. Beatboxing, of course. He told me he does that this all the time. Yeah, I know. He sings grooves all the time. Fact is, he, he does it with different rhythms. I don't know how he does that. He's got two brains, I guess. How did you coordinate with the, the second grammar in that case? Oh, that's a whole different story, huh? Okay, <laughs> after, okay, after this uh, finishes, yeah. Okay.
back to the frog rock now. Yeah. Especially in a, in a few seconds. <laughs> this is all from his repertoire. Indeed, indeed. My lord. Okay, I'm absolutely speechless, and I can see that quite a few people that actually follow this performance were saying the same thing. I read quite a few. I can't believe it. Amazing, and so on. So, <laughs> yes, indeed, there is no doubt. But honestly, yoga, and this is where I want to hear your voice about um, the the piece is already stunning per se, but the rendering that you guys did, the arrangement is absolutely mind-boggling. So tell me how this was organized since you were uh, an important part of the, Sorry, of the production here. Yes? Okay, can you hear me, Prof? Uh, can, yeah. can you share the link with us? Because it was lagging a bit. I want to... Yes, absolutely. I will, uh, I, will, I will share all the links. Uh, um, I will publish all the links using maybe the Facebook. Okay. Uh, any, any way I will... Uh, or if you send me an email, I'll, I'll uh, share all the links with you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right. So, Yoga, we were saying, uh, since you were a big part of the arrangement of this piece, and uh, uh, I wanted to know how you approached the whole thing. So, they, they told us that um, we're going to have about a half an hour of music to play, to play with him. And um, actually, going to the, your, the drummer question, yep. they told us that there's a half an hour and we need to split it, the half an hour. And I mean, we were like, there's no way that we're gonna split the half an hour. There's like, there's no way we're gonna do that. We're gonna find a way to do it together. And we found a way that we just built one kind of like big drum set for the both of us, mm -hmm. where we share the same bass drum, we share some stuff because he's a lefty and I'm a righty, so it works. Oh, nicely. that works, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and he's one of the, I'm, I'm, he's, one of the best drummers that I know. Um, so we just kind of, we, within ourselves, we composed um, 
kind of like a, a complementary complementary drum parts. It's not we're not just doubling each other. We there's a main part and there's like a just a complementary swells and floor tom accents stuff stuff like that that will just enhance the the the, the drum part. So we were having a blast regardless to everyone. We were just, it's the first time that I actually get to play with them because I'll never get to play with another drummer like that. And then they said that we're going to do a video, um, a Berkeley video with him, and we need to choose some song. And I think he chose Drip, I think. And then we suggested that if we already going to go into the studio and just do Drip, maybe we can go and after the song is like ends, we can just extend it with a few of songs from his like earlier repertoire uh he agreed so we extended it that that whole ending has some segments from his um like old catalog and um it, it just we wrote the the Yoel, the, the guitar player wrote the structure for all the arrangement and he br brought it to rehearsal and we just did a lot of just like fine tuning and changes and blah 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 and stuff like that in in, in the rehearsal, just because we were all there, and then this guy can say this thing, we can add this thing, we can try out this thing, and we we had the privilege of doing that before he came before he came in. So we we were like, okay, we can stay here for seven hours and discuss this. So it's, it's not a problem. Indeed. So we just did it. A, a lot of it was just a lot of joint effort. Indeed, indeed. Well, the result is absolutely stunning. And uh, also the coordination between the two of you. I saw you uh, beating on the, yeah. on the sticks of the other drummer. That was a, like, a, it was really a kick. I mean, we, we, we're really good friends. And yeah, yeah. just the fact that we can actually play with this guy, um, like with Tigran, we can play with Tigran together. It's just like, I mean, come on, like, it doesn't get any better than that. So we were just having so much fun just actually composing because we didn't want to just double each other. That would be ridiculous. It would sound kind of weird. So indeed, indeed. we're switching roles. I mean, and the whole show, we did the whole show like that. Indeed, indeed. Was, well, I have some comments that, I, that I'm just reading right now. From ah, sure. the people that are following, Jeff is saying it's very reassuring to hear that accomplished accomplished percussionists sometimes uh, find this sort of a difficult thing. I thought it was just me. Ah, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. There's a lot of this going on. Yeah, behind the scenes. Indeed, indeed. Um, well, we will uh, share some more of these links uh, in the future. So uh, today I didn't have enough room for uh, today's episode to show all, everything. But I have two or, two or three other things that I want to share with you guys uh, about yoga uh, that I think are going to be very interesting because you've been covering all, kind of all kinds of genres. So um, actually you did start with... Uh, um, I don't know what you started with, but you covered uh, progressive metal, you covered uh, Indian music, you covered the Middle Eastern music, and anything, you seem like eager to learn from all kinds of cultures. And in fact, in your seminar last year, you were talking a lot about music from, uh, um, uh, from North Africa, from uh, uh, all these countries where the, the mechanisms are different. How much did you get uh, influenced by them? And in what way? A tremendous amount. So I was, I was raised on, on, on Western music. So I was raised listening to rock and roll and listening to metal. And I was learning, I played in an orchestra when I was a teenager. So a lot of reading and a lot of just Western oriented music. Mm -hmm. And when you learn, when, at least when I learned that way, that was, that was kind of the way that I viewed every, everything. So everything was through the, the Western lens. So I tried to turn everything into notes just because that's the only way that I knew. And that's the way that we were educated. And then slowly I started realizing that there, um, oh, someone said that they can't hear me. Maybe. Yes. I can hear you. So I guess. Uh... Oh, okay. Um, so then suddenly I started getting introduced to a lot of Moroccan music and a lot of Indian music, which suddenly I, I realized two things. One, I realized I, I, I just can't 
square these things into into uh, westernization. I just I just can't. There's no way to 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 express these in westernization. That's the one thing I figured out. The second thing I figured out is that those musicians don't care about westernization. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so okay, that's okay. That means there's other things. It's not it's not like the Bible. You get, there's other ways to to think about this. So I started learning a, a lot about this music, and when you start going deeper, you realize that. I mean, that's for just ignorance on my part. You just realize that these traditions, first of all, go way further than a lot of Western classical music, and they're as deep as the uh, as the the one that we are taught. So once once you realize that, and obviously, I have a, a um, I have a very good uh, basic understanding of Western notation. I have that already. But knowing that and going to explore the other the other traditions, you just realize that there's a lot to learn that you can't learn anywhere else because of the restrictions of Western rotation. Indeed, indeed. And that's a thing that just you learn there and you can apply it. But I mean, you can't write it down, which is something that I had to realize that is okay. It's okay that you can write it down. <laughs> no, no it's, doubt. Uh, well, some people have tried. Uh, you know the. Some people do, and I personally. But it's don't. always a kind of a stretch in a way. It never really works the way it should. So it, it, it's it's it, it it goes. I think it's trying to explain a set of like a, an aesthetic using tools of a different aesthetic. It doesn't really work. It's like yeah. you can't. I can't explain to you, um, you know, how something smells by tell, talking about colors. Yeah, it, it's just not the same. I can try. But it's not the same thing. So. A lot of people do do it. A lot of Western musicians do do that and try to to squeeze those other traditions into Western. I I, I just think it's not it's not the right way to do it. It's, it's not the right tool tools to do it. Indeed, indeed. That's what I think. So actually, I have two samples that I wanted to share with uh, with the students. One is actually I believe is from your own uh, from home country. And, uh, and the second one is from Indian, uh, let's say, influence. So mm -hmm. this way we can have a, a little bit of an idea of what you're talking about now. Um, the, the one that I have in mind to show first is this one. Uh, it's with the Berkeley Indian Ensemble. And uh, this includes also Shankar Mahadevan, who's a very famous uh, composer of music in, uh, in India. He, he must have written soundtracks for like hundreds. I'm talking about hundreds of very famous movies in India. And uh, he was one of the singers, along with uh, the prominent singer, I don't know the name, that is in, uh, in, uh, in this Berkeley ense Indian Ensemble, the guy with the beard, like you. Yeah, Rohit, the... Rohit uh, Raman, his name is. Yes, phenomenal, phenomenal oh, he is singer. Absolutely totally. phenomenal. Anyway, uh, so this is the Berkeley Indian, Indian Ensemble. And actually, it, it's, it's an incredible experiment, and that, that you, you have to tell me everything about it, because it basically includes something like 42 countries in, uh, in this ensemble. They're all represented by some uh, musician from some country. So the, the blend is absolutely fantastic. And the, the piece that uh, I'm going to play now is actually a piece that was uh, written... Uh, early and it was completely rearranged by by you guys and the title is five piece band many of you will recognize it so we'll talk about it later Steel fingers. How, how do you oh. play a tabla that way? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, he's the most unlikely Indian player here. <laughs> he's from Jordan. Indeed. <laughs> from Jordan? I thought it was Irish. <laughs> Everyone thinks that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, now explain me how they can do this improvisation simultaneously with many instruments. Oh, I'll explain later when we're just finished. <laughs> because I'll be squeezing my in something for a while. It's a very cool story, okay? Okay. Unbelievable, guys. This bass solo is really cool. Oh, yeah. I, I love his bass solos. Yeah, it's very <laughs> Another one of those pieces where you must have done an amazing job of uh, orchestrating the every single moment of each instrument. It's a smaller group, so it's a little bit easier. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you. 
No more Coca-Cola. <laughs> you promised that you would give a course on Coca-Cola at the Polytechnic, remember, eh? Oh, I'm totally down. <laughs> Right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's in five. Everything's in five. Indeed, indeed. Okay, before I uh, you tell me everything about that piece, you should know that this piece, I don't know how many million views it got, but at least half of those views came from me because I must have listened to that <laughs> obsessively, <laughs> ob obsessively for, for weeks and weeks. So I know every single note of that. Ask me questions, I'll answer. No, but t tell me how in the world, because uh, we've been, you know, wondering about it, how in the world you can do that level of improvisation simultaneously with multiple in instruments. I cannot even imagine that. So this is going to be very bad. It's not improvised, obviously. Well, and I, so the I thing, the thing is, the thing is, is this, this, um, this guy, Shankar Madevan, he was in the band called uh, Shakti, which both Alif, the guitar player and Rohit, the vocalist, they both really like, I mean, for, like, forever. They liked that band since they were kids. This specific uh, uh, piece was played in a show they did in 2001, I think, in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And Shankar uh, uh, did this solo in, 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 in that show uh, 20 years ago. Both of them really liked that solo and they both, I think, they both transcribed that solo. Okay. 
So when they told us that he is coming to, to, to play with us, we decided to play this piece with his original solo played by those two guys. And now, because it's already transcribed, me and Guy and the, the rhythm section, we arranged the, like, the rhythm section around that solo. So basically mm -hmm. what's happening is Shankar is listening to his solo played by a band. Oh my God! Which, and taking yeah, turns just, because this was done by the guitar first, then the, by the violin, and then by yeah. by by the bass a little bit, and also by you on the mini snare drum that you were playing too. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so it's uh it's it's kind of like a just re like a reverse engineering of a solo kind of because it was it was improvised twenty years ago. They transcribed it and we arranged that transcription kind. Of. So. Mm -hmm. That's how this whole thing came about, which I, I love. This is a... It's a phenomenal view, absolutely phenomenal view. I'm, I was just wondering, because the album Five Piece Band was originally with uh, Chick Corea and John McLaughlin, uh, Christian McBride, uh, Kenny Garrett and Vinnie Colaiuta. Uh, but the pieces... That's a different one. A different uh, exactly, one. the pieces were completely different there. So, uh, this is, yeah, this is a, so... a, a song called Five Piece Band by Shakti. With a oh, okay. Band. So, because I couldn't find any correspondence in the in the album Five Six Band, because I believe that the John McLaughlin was also uh, playing um, Indian music in so many situations. He is, yeah, he, he is a part of Shakti. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So this is a composition by Shakti. Okay, makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, totally. All right, all right. Fantastic performance. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it, a question that, that that I received this time via WhatsApp is uh, how did you manage to mix influences from various countries and how uh, do you blend them together seamlessly? What is the effort that you have to put in order to do that? The the effort is, is pretty little. The only thing I realize that I'm doing is that every time my musical taste kind of, I wouldn't say evolved, but went in a new direction, I never stopped listening to the old things that I like for some reason. So I grew up listening to, to metal and a bunch of my friends also. And when we kind of like discovered jazz and electronic music, a bunch of my friends stopped listening to one thing and went on to the new thing, which was jazz at the time. And then let's say they stopped listening to jazz and went over to the new thing, whatever the new thing is for them. Mm -hmm. That never, that kind of never worked for me. So every time something new came in, it would just added another element to, to what I liked before. I still listen to all the music I grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just, I always just add more of those things. I, I just listen to those. I actually listen to all this kind of music all the time. And you bring them in anytime, right? And, and if you, once you listen to those things enough, it's not like even a conscious choice. You just, that, that's that's who you are, and that's right. what's what's going to come out. So. Indeed, indeed. And speaking of that, um, I have I, I picked another piece, and actually we're <laughs> we're actually going over time. But if I can take advantage of a little longer, uh, a little okay more by you, time for you. Yeah, of course. I would speak until tomorrow, so that's not a problem. For me. Uh, but there is a uh, one thing that I wanted to play because, and it comes with a question because oh. it's a question that I asked you the first time we met. I, do you remember? I asked you, "What the heck is wrong with Israel? Why are most of the musicians what well, that I like, but that <laughs> the most of the most ingenious musicians of the moment in the in the jazz scene are coming from Israel?" You didn't have a very convincing answer. You just said, well, that's a small kind of... Tell me what you said, because I, I'm, I'm still not convinced about that answer. I'm sure I said something about hummus as well, for sure. <laughs> that has to be... No, but um, I... I mean, I, all I have is a guess, basically. <laughs> but I think, I think a lot of it has to do with the combination of two things. One is the fact that Israel tries to be a very Western country, even though we're very physically far from the West, mm -hmm. kind of. So I think that kind of makes makes people try very hard, just try very, just to try even harder because you have to compensate for that distance. And I think the other thing is just the work ethic here is very, very high for reasons I don't know, maybe because it's a young country and it's still like in the process of, of 
building itself. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the army. Maybe I have no idea why, but <laughs> the work ethic here is, is people work very hard here. On, indeed, indeed, indeed. On, just on, on, on everything. And as, so as Dan Levitin said in, uh, in a meeting, in the same meeting a few weeks ago, I mean, the, the work ethic is absolutely fundamental when you, when you want to do music seriously. So, yeah. That it's, must a, it's, be... a very, it's a very small scene, but because there's just not a lot of people here. But the, the scene, the, the musicians here are, I mean, but easily the, the, the best that I know. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Because there, there's, there's so much work put into this it's not it's not just yeah. pure magic people put a lot of work i had a similar conversation with mark sandler who's joined uh, the the conversation today and uh, remember mark we were talking about <laughs> exactly this topic and, uh, uh, and but i i like this this last explanation that yoga gave me i mean the the work ethic is absolutely a key aspect would you agree yeah. Yes. And also, I mean, also, up. also because Israel is a relatively new country, and people came here from all over, everywhere. So the influences here are, I mean, only maybe in the past few years you can actually say that there's original Israeli music coming on. But I mean, Israel is a country that's like 70 years old. The music tradition is not that big. Indeed. So the influences just come from everywhere. Indeed. So the, the variety of stuff that you hear just around it's very very big so maybe it's, that uh, has it's absolutely a, a very innovative uh, social experiment that is yeah, really exactly. bearing a lot of fruits right now in fact i chose ron minis for this uh, particular conversation here uh, and uh, tell me how you met uh, ron and uh, what's behind this piece uh, the aggregate actually this is a uh, how i met him is very very relevant to our conversations yeah. <laughs> because he Okay, so Ron is a phenomenal person in general. He's an amazing musician. He, uh, I mean, he's a computer hacker. He works as a hacker. Really? He, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's one of those guys. He's just good at everything he does. And he does hard stuff. <laughs> 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 so he started, his first album is very, uh, like, kind of singer-songwriter, not really singer-songwriter, but songs that he wrote and... <clears throat> and arranged to, I think, like a small chamber orchestra. And then he was playing a lot of guitar at the time. And he, uh, when he was younger, he, uh, he studied classical piano for uh, a while. Um, but then he stopped, he played guitar for, for a very long time. And then he wanted to go back to the to piano playing. He started writing music by himself. And he wrote, so he is not... He is the kind of musician that I like because he is very, very, his music intuition is very, very high, but his knowledge of theory is very, very low. Oh, really? I yeah, wouldn't have expected so, the opposite from a hacker or a... Uh... So, I mean, but what the good thing about it is that he has enough musical confidence to just do something. If it sounds like he wants, it doesn't matter. Theory behind it doesn't really matter. <laughs> if you, whatever you call it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he wrote his music and he wanted to do it in a jazz trio kind of setting and he contacted me because he wrote stuff that he didn't understand <laughs> so he the, and the way he wrote was he decided that he's going to record an album uh -huh. he and he had maybe 30 seconds of one piece but he decided <laughs> that he wants to record an album the first thing he did is book a studio for like four months or five months later that was the first thing he did, which is like, are you nuts? Why are you doing this? And <laughs> he booked the studio and he booked, um, he, he, the, he very much liked the, uh, there's some players that he, that he found that he wanted to, to play with him in the album and he already secured them for that session. All this by, while having maybe 30 seconds of music, he didn't even write the music. Wow. So... <laughs> that would obviously just put a deadline for him, and he started writing really quickly. Go, he so went crazy. <laughs> he's, he, he got to a wall where he had the music written, but he needs to communicate it to the musicians at home, which means he needs to write it on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. He needs to write charts for this. So somehow, I think through a mutual friend, he got to me, and his, his first message to me was, 
you know, no like hello, I am this and this, and how are you about nothing like that. <laughs> His first thing was a, 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 like an MP3 of like a minute of music, and a question: Can you help me figure out what's going on? <laughs> That was the, and it was like you know, and I opened this thing, and I was like, like no, who are you? Why do you have a blue beard? And why are you talking to me? It's like you know, what, what's going on? But I liked it. I I, I liked the, the way that it's just like straight. I don't know. I kind of like that. So this is this is very interesting because I've had long, a lengthy conversation with uh, with my students. And uh, we were talking about how you reconciliate the mind of an engineer with the mind of, uh, of a musician, because the two, there is always this dichotomy where the, the, the mind of these two figures don't really merge easily. And uh, in this case, you're kind of reversing the role because he's, uh, uh, for what I understand, he's a computer uh, expert, but at the same time, he's a musician, but he doesn't use any of these skills as a, uh, as a te technologist in order to figure out what he's doing in the art of making music. You, on the other hand, who is a musician and te well, you're also a technologist, I shouldn't uh, leave that side aside, but you are a true engineer when it comes to designing rhythms and design, understanding the structure, because I've seen you in action. So, so what do you he, think about I mean, this? He is, um, what you should uh, know, obviously, if you've seen the video, you, you've seen that. Mm. He is, his engineering side comes out very, very much in, in, the, in his music because he, what he does is he um, manipulates his acoustic piano with pedals and loopers and everything on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is one of the, I mean, I heard people do it before, very, very poorly, like very, very amateuristic kind of way. He took it to a level that I've never, I've, I mean, I've never even heard it before. I'll, we recorded his second album that is not out yet, but when it's going to come out, I'll send it to you. That just Please. takes takes the 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 bar of manipulating pianos because it's a it's a jazz trio you know upright bass drums piano but the piano is connected to so many manipulations it's just the soundscapes that he creates are just there's no words to explain it we need a separate session just for that just to oh, talk about I mean, that Absolutely. totally it's it's it's, it's once it's out I'll, I'll send it to you it's, it's so how it's, about if i play just a little bit of that not the entire piece because we don't have enough time but i just just wanted to give a taste to who is connecting right now sure yeah. All the distortions and things that you hear in the in the background yeah. is all live in this with this and then, and then. It's not me. <laughs> no no no. It's just even tight stuff. In this particular piece, uh, Yoga, you're, is something that reminds me very much of Shaima Maestro. The says that the, the drums become an narration, not simply keep the rhythm. But you're kind of telling a story with the drums. Is that, do you agree with that? Or? Oh, I mean, totally. This piece was also super hard to just come up with that drum part because it's just... Yeah. That's, that, it's a nine. Not anymore, but it was a nine. It was a nine, yeah. And that nine is super small, super condensed. It's just, it took a very long while for me to 
get my head around. Figure it out, yeah. Phenomenal. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to play, at least a little bit, uh, uh, is something that connects to uh, another aspect of your artistry. Uh, in, um, it's related to uh, progressive metal. Oh, I'm I'm saying this down. indeed, and uh, <laughs> I'm very passionate about progressive rock, progressive metal, and I know Mark Sandler is too. We talk about it very often, and uh, um, we. What I meant to say is that very often you he you see a kind of a caustic reaction on the part of people when uh, they look for um, sophisticated music, and. Uh, they become snob uh, towards progressive metal or progressive rock because maybe not progressive rock, but progressive metal for sure. And this I find a little bit irritating because there is so much you can learn from progressive metal, especially in structuring complex rhythm. That's where you go and explore. So the first question I wanted to ask you about this, because uh, the piece I wanted to play at least a little bit of, uh, is with a group that, that you uh, put together in 2009 uh, together with uh, Joav Ephraim, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. The keyboard and singer of uh, what became then the, the distorted harmony. Just the keyboard, keyboard is in, in writer, not singer. And keyboard and writer, okay, you're right. And the singer is someone else, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was just wondering, um, it remains hometown for you, right? Uh, progressive metal. Uh, how much of that do you bring in your everyday practice and how much do you bring in your everyday composing artistry and uh, arranging and so on? So, I, I mean, I grew up listening to that. I grew up listening to, to, to metal and I mean, through obviously like progressive rock and rock of the 70s and 80s or 60s, 70s and 80s. <laughs> through that, I, I got to, to progressive metal and I... So as I said before, I just it's because it's something that you just I just listen to a lot. I still listen to it a lot, and it's just something that comes. I mean, it comes out everywhere. The power of it kind of comes out everywhere. It took me a long time to 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 re to uh, like to address playing softly, because playing louder is a what I did for the first half of my life. B it's kind of easier to play. Playing soft is so difficult in, for drummers, at least, that that took, that took a long while. Um, so it's, it's just, I mean, incorporating that, that side, it's not even, uh, it's, it's, it's just part of, of who I am. It's, I, for, for a second, I, I, I started doubting it as well when I was like 22 or 23. I just realized that, I mean, I remember actually the, the exact day I was listening to, uh, I was learning a lot of, of, of jazz, a lot of jazz stuff. And I was, uh, I was cleaning my apartment and listening to my iPod on shuffle. And I was, and, and like, you know, a Coltrane piece came on and I was listening, like super listening to it and super trying to like analyze what's going on and, and realize all, all that because I was learning about jazz. A Thelonious Monk piece comes on, <laughs> just ran, randomly a, a bunch of, of, of um, uh, of, of, of jazz pieces came along and then in like a very, very hard shift. Uh, I don't know if you know the band Pantera. <laughs> yeah. But a Pantera song yeah. suddenly came along. And then I realized that once the Pantera song came along, I was smiling for like two minutes. <laughs> you know? so you I, felt I just, home, right? I, I just realized it's like, I mean, okay, I, I, it's, it's fine to, to like all of these. You don't have to choose. You can... I can listen to Pantera and Meshuga and all that, and I can listen to, you know, Coltrane, like, playing ballads, and I can listen to, I don't know, Lady Gaga, which her last, like, one of her last albums is an album that I love. You can listen to all those, and it's okay. It's, it's like, it's fine to do that. That's, that was quite of a, like, a big realization to me when I was surrounded by people that were like, you know, like, you know pop is bad, or, you know, metal yeah. is bad. Or jazz is bad, and it's like um, no. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Just uh, enjoy everything. There is always something to learn from anything you listen to, even exactly. the bad stuff. So uh, okay, exactly. so I I I didn't know what to choose because I've been listening to Distorted Harmony albums for a while now, and uh, so I went for something that had a video attached to it. I picked oh, up this song. It's amazing. Man. 
It's my favorite song. <laughs> it's my favorite song too. And every time she smiles. And in this particular uh, rendition, it's uh, live in uh, in Tel Aviv, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, 2018. Is it possible? Something like that. Maybe that sounds okay, anyway. correct. But I. I absolutely love this song i've been listening to that so many times so i'm gonna play a little bit of this also because it's live and uh, i like seeing it live yeah that is it he looks like me exactly yeah it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an easy feat. <laughs> What I love about this piece is that it seems straightforward, simple, but the rhythm is absolutely crazy because you have half beats that are split in two here and there. Stop it here because I want to hear something from this uh, from your from your position. So, um, first of all, how do you go about writing pieces with uh, distorted harmony? Because there's a tremendous amount of complexity, yet there is this melodic thing that keeps everything together. 
And that's, I think it's the secret in, uh, in writing complex music, to always have something that keeps everything together. What do you think about this? Oh, I, I mean, I totally support that. I, I really have a hard time listening to, com to complex music that is also sound complex. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to me, it kind of like, feels like people learn some complex, you know, rhythmic, whatever, detail, and they just implement it just for the sake of implementing it without really considering does it like does it does it flow does it sound good does it does it there's also music that's supposed to be made regardless to this polyrhythmic or rhythmic thing that you did so i there's a lot of music that that i can understand and appreciate but i don't fully like because to me, it kind of like just lacks that the, 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 the like the musicality of it. It sounds like an exercise, Indeed. basically. Indeed. And we try to, to the best of our abilities, we try to combat that, where to a point where if someone who isn't a musician listens to the, to the music, I want them to enjoy it regardless to the craziness that happens underneath. Absolutely, the, the craziness is a byproduct. Of the music it's not supposed to be the, the the center of it so and when you listen to something and the reaction is ah this is too complex for me to listen to i kind of lose i i lose attention when, when that happens i i usually understand what go what goes on but it's just i mean yeah i think the best complexity is always hidden somehow so you can it, actually go back and discover it on a second or on a third or a fourth ex listen. exactly for me if if you listen to a song and you just and you can enjoy it without like analyzing it and thinking about it and then once you enjoy it you realize like oh there's there's many more layers underneath like oh there's a lot to unfold here that for me is is, is like the actual mastery of these things. So this, that's what yeah. we try to do here as much as we can, obviously. Yeah. And, so and do you works. guys write music? Uh, you and the keyboard player play are usually co-write things together, I assume? Yeah, so usually what happens is um, the keyboard, keyboard player writes the big majority of it, and we arrange it together, me and him. Mm -hmm. Once we have probably like 85% of it laid down, We'll um, like we'll join everyone and we do the last kind of tweaks over it. Right. So, but um, he does write most of the stuff. Okay. There is there must be a truckload of discipline that you have to put into uh, learning how to play these pieces because you know. Uh, keep, yeah, yeah. I, I hear basically no difference between in level of quality and performance between the studio version and the live version, except. It's more exciting in the live version. I see. Yeah, live is always uh, is always better. But yeah, it's this is this is all, again. This is a lot of practice. This doesn't. This is not not easy for anyone. Okay, I think I uh, well beyond any human limits in keeping you in this term. <laughs> so if you, if we are all okay about this, I'm gonna play one last thing that you play uh, actually for the concert on uh, in May. And, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, so another contribution that he gave us for the coronavirus concert that we organized here at the Politecnico di Milano. And uh, maybe if you have a little more time and if uh, students want to ask you a few questions or say a few words at the end, we can just uh, stay on for a few more minutes after this. Um, um, free till tomorrow. All right. So I'll just uh, play this last thing. And with this, I'd like to say goodbye to everybody and I'll stop the recording after then. So thank you so much for joining us today, Yogev. Remember, everybody, Yogev is going to be giving a fantastic seminar because I've seen him in action. I know it's going to be fantastic on the 9th of December and you'll know the date for that as well. Um, and also, uh, I have, uh, we had before uh, joining us also Mark, uh, uh, Mark Inverno, and Mark Inverno is already booked for the 15th of December. We're going to be talking about uh, the art and science of writing music. Uh, he is an expert on artificial intelligence for uh, 
for music in general. And I really hope Mark Sandler will join us too, because he's another fantastic uh, expert in uh, artificial intelligence and in machine learning applied to music. So the conversation is gonna be extremely interesting. I know that Mark is gonna join us in front of his piano. So the conversation will be kind of multimedia uh, in many ways. Yogev, on the other hand, during the seminar, I think is gonna join us in front of his drum set. So that's gonna be just as fantastic as what you've seen today. So with this, I'd like to say goodbye to everybody and uh, we'll uh, say a few more words after this end in peace, okay? Thank you for, peace, for having me, yeah. It was great to have you. And the piece is with uh, Ishai Afterman. It's a fantastic piece called Lost, another one that I've been listening obsessively for a very long time. And you did, did an arrangement together with him of that piece uh, that I think is really worth uh, worth watching again. So his, I'm just gonna... his whole his whole second album is in, incredibly amazing. Indeed, indeed, no doubt. So. Yeah, uh, thank you again, Yogev, and uh, we'll talk again after this. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.